Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily and I like to do DIY inspiration. I would love if you would take just a moment and click that subscribe button so you never miss an update of all the fun stuff I have in store for you. Today is a super exciting day. It is the first in a new monthly series that we are doing that is an open playlist to create five DIYs under $5. I am co-hosting this monthly playlist with Missy from Crafty Cove, and this month's theme is tiered tray items. So let's get started. I decided to go with a more traditional farmhouse theme with my tiered tray. So I'm gonna make a cotton ball. <laughs> it sounds kind of funny, but I'm serious. <laughs> so you can see that each of those bags cost 50 cents. Here you can see the bags at Dollar Tree that are a dollar. You get four or five, I can't remember if it's four or five or six pieces of pods of cotton that are in there. But these little Ziploc bags I have, I actually got in the clearance section at Dollar Tree. They're just ones that had fallen off little uh, picks that had cotton on them and they just stuck them in a bag and sold them. So I bought a bunch of them when they had them. I didn't have a round form to use as my center. So I just took some tin foil to use and just rolled it up into a little ball. And then I'm gonna take each of these pods of cotton and I'm gonna make a flat surface area on the back. So you do have a little bit of trimming to do on these because of how the pod grows. It's not naturally flat. So I had to cut the wire off that had been affixed to them as well as the plastic stem. And then also the little, there's like a little teeny nodule on the back from where the cotton stem naturally is. So I just flatten them and then I am gonna go around and glue them all onto my tin foil form here. Now I do want to say that using the tin foil, since it is tin foil, it does radiate heat. It does hold on to that heat. So as you're gluing onto there with hot glue, it does get a little bit warm. I wouldn't say hot, but just if you do decide to do this, just be aware that it does get a little bit warm. Uh, and so something to pay attention to, but it did work in a pinch. So it definitely helped me out. And as you can see, I just go through and I just work in sections and glue, glue each pod as close as I can to the next one. There is that little bit of hard area on the cotton pod itself that does make it kind of hard to like smush them together. So it takes a little bit, I kind of, when I glue it in, you'll see I kind of hold it with my hands till the glue kind of dries a little bit, cools, and that way it'll keep its form. Now you can see how I'm gonna pull a little bit of the cotton out here. So when you have an area that you can see the tin foil through like that, I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue in and then I'm just gonna smush that cotton in there and voila, you cannot see the tin foil anymore. Some of the areas are like this one right here. I just put a little bit of glue into there and then I'm just going to press the uh, little cotton areas there together and it will hold them so it will cover up the spot. So I just go through all around after I'm done and I just make sure that there's no open areas and anywhere that I can glue anything in or stick cotton in, that's what I do. So we've got our first tiered tray item here. So we've got this, let's go make some more. So Hobby Lobby sells these little packages of wood platforms for I think like $2.99. Um, you can get them when they have their wood on sale. Sometimes they'll be on part of the wood sale, sometimes they're not. Um, but anyway, I think it comes with five in a pack and I'm just using one. And I'm gonna take my emery board here and I'm gonna go all the way around and soften all of those harsh uh, edges. They have a very crisp cut to them. And I wanna make this look very aged and very um, weathered, I guess. Let's go with that. So I'm just gonna go around all the edges as you can see here. And then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna wipe it down to get all of the dust particles off. And then this is the fun part. If you have some aggression, you need to work out you're gonna take some pliers or whatever. Just don't use scissors. I used scissors on one of my other videos I started to and went, no, nah, that's kind of not so safe. But I'm literally just beating up this wood to give it that distressed look. So that way it looks like a piece of wood that's been around for a really long time. You can see how it puts all those little indentations in there. And then I'm just taking some antique wax and I'm going to rub this in. One thing you'll notice is see how it does not go down into those little uh, crevices that I made, the distressing I did. So I'm gonna put a whole bunch on there because what I like about when you distress wood like this and you put the wax on there, it will seep down into those and make them darker. So when you rub it off, as you can see here, 
the uh, the darker wax stays down in there and as you wipe it off and it gets lighter you can really see the detail of that distressing I'm gonna take this candlestick holder that I bought at Hobby Lobby when it was 50% off, and I am going to end up gluing this to the little wood platform we have to make a little riser for our tiered tray. So what I'm gonna do at first is make sure that that antiquing wax is completely dry because your glue will not adhere to the wood at all if it's wet. So I'm using my hair dryer. You can let it air dry, use a heat tool, whatever you'd like. If you want a permanent hold, use the E6000. That will make it permanent. I am just using hot glue because I do wanna be able to change this up if I decide to either do a different top or use the candlestick holder for something different. To go on top of our little platform we've made, I'm going to do a little potted plant. So I am going to take this little pot that came from Dollar Tree. It came with two in a package and I'm going to completely cover it with white paint. You of course can use whatever pot you may already have at home. You don't need to paint it if you don't want to. It's This is totally customizable for how you want to do it. I'm just liking the white look on this particular tiered tray that I'm doing. So that's why I'm going ahead to do the white paint. I do paint down just a little bit in the top so when you see into it it all looks white now I'm gonna take a little piece of styrofoam that I have left over from another project and I'm gonna cut just the teeniest little piece off and I'm going to press that down into the pot and so that way when we stick our flowers in there they will have something to stick to so they don't move all around I take one Dollar Tree spring floral pick and I cut all of the stems off and then I cut them to the size, the height that I want them to and place them all around. I did decide that these little feather leaves did not work really well for what I'm doing with it. So I did cut those off and I will save those for another project. So here is the little platform. I just love the distressed look of the wood, how it matches the distressed look of that candlestick. I just think that is so cute. And I'm going to take our little pot that we made to go with it and it's going to lay sideways on there to give a little bit of softness to the tiered tray. So here we go, on to the next one. I am so excited that we are launching our brand new five under $5 DIY challenge series. On the fifth of every month at five Eastern time, we will release a new playlist that has all sorts of fun creators creating five DIYs for under $5 each. The theme for May is tiered tray items. So all of the creators have created five DIY tiered tray items that cost under $5 each for you. If you are a creator and wanna participate in this playlist, definitely message myself or Missy to get more information. For those of you who are just watching along and enjoying the fun DIYs we have for you, click on that playlist in the link below and I hope that you are amazed with the fun talent that you see and please consider subscribing to those DIYers that you connect with and support their channels. So now let's get back to making some more tiered tray items. Now I'm going to take one of these wood planks from Dollar Tree and we're just going to make a little sign that says farmhouse on it. So I'm choosing to make mine very simplistic, very white, and guys, I am not distressing this at all. It's shocking, I know. Anyway, I'm going to cover all completely in white paint, front, back, and sides, and just make sure uh, it is a very light color of wood, so you may be able to get away with one, possibly two coats of paint, so not a whole lot. I do cut the word farmhouse out on my Cricut. You can hand do it, you can use a stencil, you can have it say whatever you want. This is just how I'm choosing to do mine. I actually don't have a little sign that says farmhouse, so which is also shocking. So anyway, I just go ahead and I'm weeding this out. And this was actually just uh, this font and everything. I don't even know the name of the font because it was just a design that was in design space already done for me. So I just cut that out and I'm using my transfer paper here. And guys, I cannot find my little scraper to use my transfer paper with. So I've been using like the wooden craft sticks or even like, I think I've got like a paint stick that I end up, paint stir stick that I end up using, which works fine, but somehow I've got to find that or get a new one, I don't know. 
Anyway, so then I'm just going to try and my best to center this onto this little sign and I get it wrong the first time and have to take it off because there's a little tail on the F that kind of goes off. So as I'm placing it down, I go, oh, whoops, not so centered, which happens, but luckily it's, you can pull it up and I can redo it here. And that's it for this sign. I'm just taking it right over to the tiered tray. You could also paint around the edge to do like an enameled look, but I'm not aging or weathering this one at all. So let's move on to the next one. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know if it's possible for me to decorate a tiered tray and not do some type of beaded garland on there. So of course I'm incorporating one of those. I am using 30 beads, which I think for $15 you get like 500 beads or something. Um, on Amazon. I can leave a link to those below down in the description box. And then I do take some ribbon from Hobby Lobby that was 50% off and I separate every five beads and then I do a little tie of the, the ribbon. And of course you can do whatever ribbon and whatever color you're doing your tiered tray or for different seasonal things or different holidays. I'm just kind of going more for that classic neutral farmhouse look. So I chose these two black contrasting pattern ribbons. So again, I count every five beads and then I just tie it off and do that all the way down to the end. I decide at this point that my little ties are a little long so I do go through and just trim them up to be a little bit more subdued or tame so but you can leave these obviously as long or as short as you want I just felt like with the size of my tiered tray and everything I didn't want the ribbons to completely take over I then make a tassel so I just do a loop of the twine around my hand and then I'm going to pinch it off not quite in the middle, maybe like a fourth of the way down, a third of the way down, maybe even. And then I take another strap of twine and I tie that into a knot to hold it. That's gonna make your upper loop that you're gonna use to fasten it to the beaded garland. And then I just wrap that around here. And when I get as many wraps around as I decide that I want, I trim it off and then I just use my hot glue gun to glue this down. I do use my makeup spatula, which I had so many people comment to me on my last video that they now sell those makeup spatulas at Dollar Tree. So I have not seen them at mine. So definitely check that out because that is amazing if they have them there. And then I just strap this on. I put the twine through the loop and then I just tie it on. I just do a traditional knot. I get the tassel facing the way that I want before I make sure that that knot is pulled tight. As I'm playing around with my beaded garland here, I decide that I want to tie a loop in it. I feel like sometimes with a loop, it is fun to either put over a jar or a bottle or something, but I feel like you can also get them to lay a little bit nicer in a tiered tray uh, if they have a loop in them. And I'll show you what I mean when I put it in. So I just find a spot where I want it to tie off and then I just use the end of the twine to give it a good knot there. That way it holds it in place. Now you could easily make a, another tassel and do another tassel, but as you see here, it kind of already has a loop there. So another end's not gonna be falling or making it go every which way. And you can loop it over the edge very easily like that. So there we go. I would love if you guys came and said hi to me over on my Instagram page. It's just farm charm chic. 
you can see from my fun photos that I just keep an update of all the things that I'm working on, ways I'm decorating, all sorts of things. So definitely come say hi. I would love to see you over there. Now for our fifth and final tiered tray item. I'm taking this square sign from Dollar Tree. You can use just a plain piece of wood. You can use any shape of sign, but something that's, and actually depending on your tiered tray, something that can stand up by itself, but how I end up placing this in, it actually has something that it can rest on. So I'm just going to give it a plain white coat of paint all the way around. And I actually used just a little, I think that's like a spackle container. I set it on to get it off of the table to give a little bit of area. And I do just use my hair blower to go in. And you can see I have a little helper here. This is my little boy that absolutely loves to paint. So he's here helping me make sure that this sign gets all of the coverage that it needs. So you can take a look at his mad painting skills here. I am seriously having a thing for stripes right now. So I'm going to tape off and do some stripes on this sign. So I do three pieces of tape, tear the middle one out and use that as my spacer. And so then you can kind of see, I'll place another one down and I'll tear that middle one out. And I do that all the way down the sign. Then I'm taking some of my black. This is just a black chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree. I like to do the pounce method. So I pounce along the edge of the tape and then I go back in to make sure that the middle is completely covered there. And I do this for each of the open places on the sign. Now we're gonna tear them off and make sure that everything looks as crisp as we can have it. Sometimes you have a little bit of bleed through, but if you've done it, got a good job, then most of the time you don't. So you can see I've got my little helper helping me tear that tape off there. And I am gonna make this sign look a little rustic. So there are a couple of lines that maybe aren't so perfect, but they actually look pretty good, I think. I take my emery board and I am going to make this look pretty roughed up and make it give, you know, of course I've got to distress something in this video, you guys. So which I guess I've done a couple of things, but uh, after I get finished sanding it down, I do take my wipe and wipe it all the way off. I had this sign from Easter from Dollar Tree and I loved the blessed on the burlap. So I'm taking that off and you just pull it and it comes right off. And then I'm going to use this on the front of our sign. So I cut it down to size where I want it to be and then I'm actually going to fold the top part of this uh, burlap down and I'm gonna glue this on and make like a little pouch to put some flowers in. So I use some hot glue and I did have a couple of these, uh, you can see in the corner there, these are Christmas tree garland beads that I took two of and I just used my wire cutters and cut them in half to kind of look like little buttons or something like they were holding the sign on. You would not have to do that and of course I'm using my Cricut spatula here you guys instead of my makeup spatula so I got hot glue all, all over that and had to fix that but you know it is a crafter's life so it, you probably know what I'm talking about if you've crafted and you just kind of grab what's right there to use <laughs> so anyway I do then take these see and I'm gonna glue them on here but I decide that the beads need a little bit more color I don't like the natural color of the wood on there so I do take my elephant chalk paint and I do go over those, being very careful not to get onto the burlap. And then I do even take a little bit, I had a little bit of white left over on one of my brushes and I did, I don't show it, but I do go over the top to give it a little bit more of a, a rustic, distressed look. And then I glue the top, not the top, don't glue the top because then you won't get your flowers in there. I glue the bottom and the two sides and then I just line that up where I want that and place it down. See, this is where I was looking and seeing like, well, those buttons really don't stand out, the little beads. Now see, I put my fingers in there to kind of give it a little bit of an opening so it's not completely taut to the sign. Uh, but then use my little makeup spatula, which thank you to all of my commenters. Let me know you can buy these at Dollar Tree now, so thank you for that. 
and then I take one of these picks from Dollar Tree this again is just one from their spring line which they still have these in there I was at Dollar Tree a couple days ago and saw plenty of these so I'm thinking maybe they like put it together that people really like these so hopefully you can find some but I just arrange them how I decide I want them in there and I love how this looks now I know I put this behind this little hook here guys and trust me I fix that in just a minute but this is all the projects what do you guys think I'm gonna go show you guys everything together here is the final look of everything together I did use a couple of plants from Ikea some succulents from Dollar Tree and I had this little tobacco basket from Hobby Lobby that I used to kind of fill it out but I'm extremely pleased and happy with how each of these DIYs turned out. I think that they will be great to use like this as a like an everyday farmhouse tiered tray. Or I can take a couple of these items and use them when I do a more themed tiered tray for different holidays or for different seasons. I'm curious to know and I want to know down in the comments number one what was your favorite of all of these DIYs and number two when you do decorate a tiered tray or if you decorate a tiered tray do you like to do it more for seasons or holidays or you do more general every day I'm curious to know so thank you guys so much for watching I hope that you like this make sure you check out all of the other videos linked in the playlist below and tell everybody hi and give me a great big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't if you enjoyed the video that you just saw here's another one that you might enjoy and as always remember to like and subscribe thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day